Now the UMass Hoops Insider with Derek Kellogg, brought to you by Coca-Cola. He was the greatest ever to lace him up. Now the next generation of Jordans has hit the college basketball world, including the newest star from the state of Florida, sophomore Marcus Jordan, who has led Central Florida to an undefeated start. They'll come to the Mullen Center on Wednesday night. Welcome to UMass Hoops Insider from the Mullen Center, where we get you set for the game against Central Florida on Wednesday night. The Knights, a team that could be ranked in the national top 25 if they beat Miami on Saturday. Also coming up later in the program, we'll introduce you to some visitors that came to a UMass game recently, all the way from the other side of the world. Now joined by Coach Kellogg, you're in the middle of an 11-day layoff. How are things going this week? Things are going well. It's been a good opportunity for our guys to really get after their academics. Um, it's finals time, so uh, that's the most important thing going right now. And the rest of the injuries, I think it's been a good break for everyone, uh, the coaching staff included. And uh, I'm looking forward to a big game against Central Florida next week. You've been pointing towards this layoff, too, with another chance to work on maybe some fundamentals. Is this almost like having a second preseason camp? Absolutely. This is a great time to really get back to what's made us special at times, and that's great half-court defense pushing the ball in transition and really sharing the basketball, which I think we got away from at times. Getting ready for Central Florida. In fact, let's take a look a little closer at that game. The Minutemen and the Knights at 7 p.m. That's Wednesday night right here. Well, the Knights beat UMass last year in the season opener, but they've since made a coaching change. Donnie Jones came from Marshall to take the reins, and with Michael Jordan's son Marcus leading the way, they're one of the last remaining undefeated teams in the country. How about them? Yeah, they're a very good team. Uh, Donnie's done a great job getting those guys to where they are uh, to this point in the season. Have had some big wins. Uh, uh, a borderline potentially top 25 team coming in here so we need the fan support to come out against a very good Central Florida team and a game that uh, is a big game for the Minutemen program. Well the tip off will be at 7 p.m. on Wednesday. You can watch it on CBS 3 now which is Comcast Channel 293 in Western Mass. Or listen on the radio and internet on the UMass Sports Network. To get your tickets call 1-866-UMASS-TIX or go online to umassathletics.com. Well, this year, the fans have a new favorite coming off the bench for the Minutemen, a walk-on from Cathedral High in Springfield, who also happens to be a cousin and godson of Coach Kellogg. He could have gone to Division III and have been an integral player on in hoops, but instead chose to walk on here at UMass to be a role player. With more, Big Y presents a few minutes with Jordan Kucher. Hi, yeah, I'm Jordan Kucher. I'm from West Springfield, Mass., and I'm a freshman. UMass, I uh, just had a great opportunity to be a walk-on here, and I uh, figured there's no better experience. He's my uh, cousin and uh, godfather. He encouraged me to come. Uh, just, you know, he asked me a couple months prior to, just wanted to give me an opportunity, and I absolutely, absolutely couldn't pass it up. You know, he's a big inspiration for me, and, you know, it was a huge thing in our family to, when I was younger to come up and watch him play, so definitely a big inspiration. Also 33, Jordan Kucher checking into the UMass lineup. It was definitely a nerve-wracking experience, you know, uh, stepping on the big court for the first time. Didn't know what to expect, so definitely nervous, definitely. When I'm not playing basketball, you know, I just like to hang out with my friends, usually get some, try to get some downtime, just relax. Definitely been busy lately since the season started, so just trying to get some time to relax and lay low. Favorite type of food is absolutely uh, anything, pretty much buffalo. Buffalo chicken is definitely a big favorite of mine, and I just like the spicy hot food. Thanks so much, Jordan. Welcome to the main entrance here at the Mullins Center. The last game for the Minutemen was a week ago Saturday, as there was lots of up and down action against a Big East opponent. Let's check out the highlights in instant replay. UMass and Seton Hall. Train of inbounds, baseline underneath, fires to Gurley, a left elbow three, it's good by Gurley. Back to back trifectas for Anthony, it's a hot stop for AG. Train of Mutt rushes to the front court, and then Sampson enters into Sean Carter, back to Sampson, missed the layup, Sampson got it back and banks it in. Well, great give and go with Sean and Sampson Carter, and then he finishes up the garbage two, 17 apiece. Jamel Jackson curling into the lane, and knocked away by Correa, loose on the floor, and Freddie Riley will pick up the steal. Well, they forced some turnovers of late, and now Riley chucks up a three and knocks it in, a 25-footer. Benched with two fouls, and now Javon Farrell overplaying the pass by Polonese. Javon dove on the floor, and the junkyard dog got a steal. Now Correa to Riley, and Riley's three is good! Oh, Farrell set it up, and Riley hits his third three of the half. It's a five-point Seton Hall lead. And Anthony
Brittany Gurley an uncontested defensive rebound. It'll go all the way. Gurley in the lane. Hangs and banks it home. He went coast to coast on the free throw miss. And the men and men are within four. Gurley right back into Vincent. One on one with Herb Pope. Took him into the middle. Vincent pump fakes. Gets open. Banks it in again. Two straight in for Terrell Vincent. Seconds. Correa back toward a Gurley. Left handed. Soaring on the baseline. And he puts it in. Trying to dunk it and kind of went off the rim and in. Early goes to Vincent. Vincent spinning to the right baseline. Double team came, so he kicks up top to Farrell. Farrell drives, fouled, banks it up, and drops in. And the foul. What a shot by Farrell as he was being undercut by Jamel Jackson. Farrell is five out of five at the line. Here's the full court pressure off the made free throw. Keon Lawrence pass back by Gurley, stolen by Gurley. All the way, Gurley. Banks in his 21st point of the night. Crab getting into it. Inbound, of, oh, it's Riley open for three, but he missed it. Long rebound to Gurley. Gurley inside, banks it in. He follows up the Riley miss, and it's seven straight. UMass back within 58-52. Approaching the 12-minute mark, the Hall can get the, its largest lead of the night with a basket. It's a Theodore three. Got Jordan Theodore. Splash. Timeout, UMass. Even with the loss, the Minutemen still stand at 7-3 and three on the season with only three games remaining before the start of Atlantic 10 play. Boy, that's coming up before you know it. There's been a rookie on the Minutemen so far this season who's been a huge pest for every opposing point guard that he matches up with. To see how much Daryl Trainer has been able to frustrate his opponents, let's go to Coach Kellogg in the film room for Coke Chalk Talk. Here we are in front of our smart board to watch my man Daryl Trainum really get after it on the defensive end of the floor. He's, a, he's fun to watch. He pesters the other team's point guards. He's all over the floor on the defensive end of the floor. And to watch his great theatrics, the way he makes the referee make a decision, is fun to watch and enjoyable to coach. As you watch him here in our home game in our press, he does a nice job of running back to the middle of the floor, looking to tip from behind, and getting in a defensive presence to make the charge call. Easy call for the referee. Here he is in our Boston College game one more time, in the middle of the floor, running him down and creating havoc on the defensive end of the floor. Two more times, here he is just playing defense, beat him to the spot, and watch the offensive charge, making the, making the referee make a call. And lastly, pestering, running from behind, trying to tip, jumping in his way, bang! Daryl train him one more time. That's four offensive falls, he's up to eight, and like over a four game span, doing a great job. And in the Boston College game, when we needed to make a run, he created three offensive falls and made the referees make those calls. Daryl Trainum is becoming a fan favorite, a fun player to watch, a pest on defense, and really entertainment at its finest. Now I gotta get him to play a little bit smarter and make sure that he's uh, in great position on the defensive end of the floor. All right, thanks coach. We gotta take our first break of the show, but when we come back, we've got some great highlights from one of the most hyped up games in the history of the Mullen Center. Here's a hint, Tim Duncan was prominently involved. That's when we come back. Why shop at Big Y? Because we do windows, and shelves, and floors. We even wash cars. Our customers tell us time after time, your stores are really clean. It makes us feel warm and fuzzy all over. Fuzzy's good. <laughs> We're also known for something else around here. Shoppers cleaning up with our sales. Only the best for your family. The UMass Amherst Alumni Association is over 225,000 alumni strong. Our vibrant community participates in professional development programs, alumni clubs, athletic, and other events around the globe. Explore the traditions, resources, and opportunities that are your UMass Amherst Alumni Association. Get connected today. You are! You are! Your tickets now. Call 1 866 UMass TIX or visit UMassAthletics.com. Welcome to My Coach. Choose your sport. My Coach. 
coach said, I gotta get faster. My coach said, I gotta gain speed. My coach said, just listen to my voice. My coach said, I know what you need. My coach said, I'll be faster on the fast break. My coach said, I'll be faster through the hole. My coach said, I'll be faster to the ball. My coach said, be faster. It's 2010. What happened to cloning ourselves? I mean, if we at Coke Zero can copy real Coke taste with zero calories, why can't you have more use? I have the foundation that I need. I mean, they had the bad one that made my skin break out, but I am not buying that. Oh, uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know how it would work. Mm. But we do know things can be cloned. I'm looking at you, scientists. Da, 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 da. The UMass Hoops Insider with Derek Kellogg, brought to you by Coca-Cola. Welcome back to UMass Hoops Insider. Well, it's the 15-year anniversary of the 95-96 Minutemen team's run to the Final Four, and every week we're looking back at a different game from that season. Today, it was one of the most anticipated games in the history of this building. Third-ranked UMass was 3-0. Tenth-ranked Wake Forest was also 3-0. And the two big men is who everybody wanted to see. Marcus Camby versus Tim Duncan. Let's take a look back. December 6, 1995. UMass welcomed 10th-ranked Wake Forest and star center Tim Duncan to the Mullen Center for the home opener. The game had a massive buildup. I've never been a part of a game that was so overhyped, I would think. I mean, they were building up the rivalry with me and Tim Duncan, like Will Chamberlain against Bill Russell. And this long-anticipated matchup is underway. I was really pumped up for that game, and I was not playing with him myself until I had to settle down in the second half. But that year, we proved that it was more than just me. It was a solid team effort. If I was to pick in my lifetime one game which was so much like the first night of the Final Four, it was the Wake Forest game. Camby at his best, the team, Dante Bright, everybody at their best, and just destroyed, absolutely destroyed a team from the ACC that was supposed to be pretty good. Marcus Camby went on to win National Player of the Year honors that season and was the second pick in the 96 NBA draft. Tim Duncan ended up staying at Wake one more season and he was picked first in 1997. Well, imagine if the TV show American Idol picked basketball players instead of recording artists. Well, that's what a popular TV show in China is doing. In fact, they've selected some finalists who got the opportunity to come all the way to the United States. And wouldn't you know it, they made their way to the Mullen Center for a game last week. Sounds interesting, right? With more, here's CBS3 Springfield's Ezra Broder. And these young guys, they all have a basketball dream. It's very popular in China. The basketball actually is a very popular game in China. Because in China, everybody wants to sport. So basketball is the best to choose. Millions of Chinese college students joined this campaign and only five win this campaign. So they are very lucky. My basketball dream is a Chinese reality show and five college players won the competition. Their prize? A trip to the U.S. to watch American basketball. I feel so good. Yeah, I like America. The guys went to the UMass game against Maine last week, an experience they'll certainly remember. Basketball is very popular and very good in Massachusetts. <laughs> yeah, and especially in UMass, we know that NCAA is very good in UMass. The one part about UMass the guys don't like, though? Cold weather? Yeah, the weather is so cold. I will less close. For UMass Hoops Insider, I'm Ezra Broder. It was great to see our international flavor here at UMass with the, the Chinese t uh, players who came over to visit and watch our team in action. And they even got a taste of the coaches at the rec center playing noon ball. So it was great to see those guys, and we wish them the best of luck. Well, we have to take a break, but when we come back, we're going to go on the court, and I'm going to show you one of my favorite drills of all time to get the Minutemen ready for great defense against Central Florida.
The thing I like about UMass is that there's so many choices, so many options. It's incredible to be able to go to a school that is this diverse. To be able to put on my resume that I've done marketing for the show Glee and movies that have been number one at the box office. I came from Chicago to UMass for the sports management program because it's one of the top programs in the nation. And I love having a practical major where I can be at school and feel like I'm doing something. There's so much research going on here. There's lots of opportunity for undergraduate involvement in research that you don't get at a smaller institution. Why shop at Big Y? Because we stand behind our quality. Literally. <laughs> because my beef is all natural Angus from the USA. My strawberries are all Driscoll's. And I grind our beef fresh all day long. We have the best sales week after week. And everything's guaranteed fresh. Fresh. Fresh as one of these. Only the best for your family. From ours. Get your tickets now. Call 1-866-UMASS-TIX or visit umassathletics.com. Welcome to my coach. Choose your sport. My coach says I got to get faster. My coach says I got to gain speed. My coach says just listen to my voice. My coach says I know what you need. My coach says I'll be faster on the fast break. My coach says I'll be faster through the hole. My coach said, I'll be faster to the ball. My coach said, be faster. Hi, Peter Trow, uh, played uh, at UMass from 1970 to 1974. I played for a freshman team uh, that was 18-1 in 1970. It was Julie Servings uh, last year. And uh, there would be a line at 3 o'clock in the afternoon from the cage down to, uh, so down to the middle of Southwest Storms. It's wonderful to be back here. I had the opportunity to play football, run track, uh, and play basketball uh, while at the University of Massachusetts. And you know, a lot of the lessons uh, that I've learned back in, in the early 70s have carried through through my career. And it's, it's, it's great to come back and see some of the players that I, that I played with and uh, certainly wonderful memories playing in, uh, in the cage. I work for a company called VWR International. I'm a vice president of sales and uh, spent 30 years in, uh, in that industry. Peter Tro averaged nearly 10 points per game over his three varsity seasons under head coach Jack Lehman. Those three years coincidentally the same as Al Skinner and Rick Pitino. Well, as promised, time to go onto the practice court with Coach Kellogg as he takes us through a defensive-oriented drill. Let's see what they've been working on. Here it is with DK's X's and O's. In practice, I love to break down our defensive principles into the half court. And I have my assistant coaches run the drill, uh, and then I'll come down and help them out and give a little bit of a verbal of how the drill's supposed to go, what we're looking to do today. Coach Ginsburg is going to work on our ball pressure, our on-the-ball defense, how I want our team to pressure the ball. And then we're going to go into a two-on-two -two of doing what we call stunting. So when the guy drives the ball at you, we want our defensive player to stunt, which is fake at him to slow him down and get back to our man. Meanwhile, while we're doing that, we want to make sure we're pressuring the ball and really helping and talking to each other. Here goes Coach Ginsburg. Close out hands high. Good, good. Pressure the ball. Pressure the ball. We also want to work on the offense of pivoting with the basketball and being strong with the basketball. Good, good, good. We're working on pressuring the basketball without getting beat off the dribble. It's not live right now. What we're trying to do is really just get all over the offensive player, make it hard for him to see the floor, and make it hard and uncomfortable for the offensive player. And we're going to start it with what we call a closeout. We're going to give the ball to the offensive player, we charge at him, and we want to close out with a hand high so that if the offensive player decides to shoot, it's a quick fake at him, and then we're in our defensive position, pressuring the basketball without getting beat. Good, good. We really want to bother the basketball, and we call ball, 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 ball. If we drive it, we're going to do a lunge. 
chest him in pressure. Good, good, good. good. Hands, hands! Maxi, close out with a hand high. Give him the ball. Ball here. Just like we work on our closeout drill. You guys, you're throwing and closing. Hand high on this floor. Boom, boom, boom. And knowing that you want him to drive, okay? Come on, come on, come on. Good. Close out. Hand high, hand high. Good, good. Now space hands. Bother his eyes. Good. Good, 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 good. Good, good. Good, 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 good. It's great that even in college, we do a lot of the drills that you may see at a, a young kid's practice, a high school practice, because it's all about fundamentals and knowing what the coach wants and how to do it correctly. Good, good, good. Move the ball. Good, 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 good. Lunge chest, lunge chest. Good, good. Pressure, pressure. Good, good. What a drill. I learn something from you every time. Well, I'm glad you're doing. I'm, I hope the players <laughs> learn as much as you learn every week, Josh. <laughs> <laughs> we got to take a break. It's our final break in the show, but when we come back, we're going to find out some non-athletic talents for some of the Minutemen, and Coach Kellogg included. Well, that's a tough one. <laughs> Start thinking. We'll be back. Alumni Association provides resources for alumni and students like campus to career programs, online tools, scholarships and mentoring opportunities that prepare students for, for life, life after, after graduation. graduation. The Alumni Association sponsors student traditions and athletic events. Make connections at social, professional, and cultural alumni events across the country. You are! You are! You are! It's 2010. Weren't we supposed to have time machines by now? I mean, if we at Coke Zero can give the world real Coke taste with zero calories, why can't science give us an unlimited supply of do-overs? Man, you dance like a man. I, I dance like a man? What? No, wait. Too easy. <laughs> mm. We bent the rules of taste. Physicist, isn't it time to bend time? Da, 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 da. The thing I like about UMass is that there's so many choices, so many options. It's incredible to be able to go to a school that is this diverse. To be able to put on my resume that I've done marketing for the show Glee and movies that have been number one at the box office. I came from Chicago to UMass for the sports management program because it's one of the top programs in the nation. And I love having a practical major where I can be at school and feel like I'm doing something. There's so much research going on here. There's lots of opportunity for undergraduate involvement in research that you don't get at a smaller institution. Tickets now. Call 1 866 UMass TIX or visit UMassAthletics.com. The UMass Hoops Insider with Derek Kellogg, brought to you by Coca Cola. We're back on UMass Hoops Insider. The Minutemen are off this weekend, but then host Central Florida here at the Mullen Center next Wednesday night. It takes incredible athletic talent to be a Division I basketball player, but we got to thinking what kind of talents do the UMass players have away from the basketball court? So we ask some of them, what's your best non-athletic talent? Let's see what they said on this week's Hookie Lao Lighter Side. I'll say rapping. Sometimes when I'm by myself in the shower or something, walking around the campus, I like to bust a couple rhymes every now and then. My best non-athletic talent probably is just talking to people. I'm really good at having carrying on a conversation with anybody, no matter who they are. I can relate to anybody almost, or I can try at least. Food Connoisseur with Tim Kenny and Kenny's Kitchen. Oh, yes, yes. We find the best ones. Yes. We find the best. Um, writing. I'm a good writer. I write a little bit of poetry here and there. Yeah? Yeah. Do you show this off to your teammates? Nah, man. I, I mess around. You know what I'm saying? Freestyle, but nothing serious. Nothing serious. Just... No? You don't want to pursue it, maybe? Nah, nah. Give me an example of a, a random person you struck up a conversation with. Like, as you know, I'm probably not the... the the rock star type, but I, I sit down in class next to people. You, I can tell 
listen to like heavy metal music and stuff have, <laughs> and have full, full out conversations with them. You know, we're all the same. Might not dress the same, but everybody's the same. Tell me your favorite food. Pizza. <laughs> that doesn't make you a kind of sword, does it? Yeah, oh yeah. I mean, pizza, Chinese, Taco Bell, Mexican. Skyline Chili, I like that. What do you usually write about? I don't know how I'm feeling, I guess. Yeah, I wrote, yeah, I wrote something for graduation. In high school, I wrote something for graduation. Uh, recited at graduation. You ever put a tape together? I actually, my brothers and cousins used to, um, they still do mess with rap and mess with the studio and stuff, so I'm attached to it a little bit. My family members, my uncles do music, but um, I mean, I just mess around with it. It's fun. You gotta have more friends than anybody else on the team. I mean, I got a lot of associates, people I associate with, I'll say. <laughs> I wouldn't say friends, but yeah, people I associate with, I'll, yeah, I'm a pretty nice guy. How long in your life have you been a connoisseur of fine food? Probably since uh, my teenage years. You developed an in intelligent palate? Oh yeah, me and Chef Ramsey from uh, Hell's Kitchen, we're right there. <laughs> I could do the blindfold test and tell you exactly what it is. How long have you been doing it for? Um, I discovered that I was pretty, I was okay at, in like sixth grade. So, whenever I was, however old I was in sixth grade, about 12. You wanna, you wanna give us a little sample? Mic check, one, two, one, two. <laughs> no, I was just playing. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, that was good. No, 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 no. How many Facebook friends do you have? I don't know, but Anthony Gurley has the most Facebook friends really? on the team. See, that could be a non-athletic talent, too, I guess. Yeah, yeah he definitely is. Uh, he's, he's known all around mass, which everybody knows already. <laughs> really? That, actually, that is a talent, is picking out the right restaurants on the road. Absolutely. Right. And it's important. Yes. I don't know if connoisseur is the word, but we're going to go with it. I got a feeling that, like, writing could actually be kind of therapeutic, like cleanse, cleansing of the soul, you know, getting it out of paper. It is. You just write whatever comes to your mind, so instead of talking, you just write about it. But here's an important question. What would your rap name be? Uh, <laughs> Lex Luger, man, I guess. Lex Luger? Why? Oh, no. You like the it. bad guys? Yeah, that was right off the top of the dome right there. <laughs> <laughs> that was on the fly. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta be on the fly. You gotta be right. You gotta be, yep. you gotta be on the fly, man. All right, guys, now Coach Kellogg is on the spot for his best non-athletic talent. I don't know if I have one, but I would say my cooking skills are vastly improved. Ooh. I want to make one of the finest ribeyes on the grill anywhere in the Northeast and maybe in the nation. In the nation? <laughs> Making me hungry. Thanks, Coach. All right, we've got to finish up with UMass Catering Quick Bites, some topics we haven't asked Mr. Kellogg yet about here in the program. And you've got the finals that the students are taking ending Saturday. That means the semester is going to be over, and we're going to find out soon if Jesse Morgan's going to be able to suit it up for your team. This yeah, week. we're looking forward to hopefully having Jesse with the team. He's uh, doing a great job in the classroom and, and working out on his own, and a, a kid that brings one more perimeter player with some good size, athleticism, and a great person, which is one of the most important things. There are some Atlantic 10 players across the league having a strong start to the season, which made us notice Anthony Gurley right now is third in the entire league in points per game. Is he really? I didn't yeah. even know that. It's great to know Anthony's playing some of his best basketball since he's been here. Um, really sharing the basketball, attacking the rim on offense, and um, has really found a groove as a senior for us. Never too early to look ahead to New Year's, right? You've got a New Year's Eve day game against Boston University here, the 31st at 2 p.m. Well, we couldn't make it a night game, Josh. We did it for you. So. <laughs> <laughs> but now it's going to be a nice game, an afternoon game, and um, wanted to make sure that the kids got a nice break for Christmas and then come back for a, for a great afternoon game on New Year's. I had to ask you, did you get your holiday shopping done yet? Not quite. I always wait till the last minute like a lot of people I know. Very good. Well, we've got one more show coming up before the holidays and New Year's. It's next week, our holiday special. Until then, we'll see you next time, Coach. Good luck against Central Florida. Thanks, and I'll have my Santa Claus hat ready for the next show. I can't wait. Thanks for tuning in. Have a great weekend. The UMass Hoops Insider, brought to you by Coca-Cola, Big Y World Class Markets, Adidas, UMass Catering, the UMass Alumni Association, the Hookie Lao, and UMassAthletics.com.